Hey, Snackers, do you treat your network as code? In episode 29, learn from Jason Belk how to take a terminal world into a programmable world with Cisco Network Service Orchestrator. Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hey everyone, I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm one of the managers of developer advocacy with the Cisco DevNet program. Welcome to episode 29 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your weekly 10 minute all things DevNet where we talk about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff that we think you might want to know. And the cool thing we're going to talk to you about today is Network Service Orchestrator with our guest, Jason. Hi, I'm Jason Belk. Uh, so I, I was at Cisco for eight years in IT operations, doing network operations implementations in our campus and branch team, helping support our 600 uh, offices within Cisco. Uh, so I've been in the trenches, feel the pain, and uh, really enjoy network automation, helping save people time. And so that after that, was in consulting for all network to code, and now I'm doing developer evangelism with Cisco's network services orchestrator. Can you uh, just for everyone who's who's uh, not indoctrinated to to network services orchestrator or NSO is what we'll probably refer to it the rest. Can you give us kind of an explanation about what it is and uh, what we can do with it? Sure. Cisco's network services orchestrator is a configuration management platform, uh, so it really helps abstract the complexity of the details of managing your configuration on all your network and other infrastructure devices. So what makes it really special for me is that it provides a suitable abstraction for us to work with any type of network devices. And also it, it takes away all those nitty gritty details of being able to you know, worry about spaces, indentation, vendor syntax, and abstract your network configuration into services that then you can expose to other stakeholders, either internally or externally. So, so and so one of the other neat things about it is that it works across pretty much every vendor and platform. So all the Cisco devices, iOS XC, XR, Nexus, ASA, you know, down the list, and as well as other non-Cisco platforms that I, I fail to remember all the names of. <laughs> we have 200 <laughs> different. And Not sure we could talk about them here anyway. <laughs> um, and basically, it, it's it also provides a transactional integrity for your entire network. So people who like to treat the network as code. Like NSO provides really a software layer that does that for you. So even devices don't support NetConfiang yet, it provides code in the, in the middle that will allow you to roll back your code, do commit dry runs, be able to then hit your devices also through NSO's APIs, where it has APIs on Python, REST, RESTConf, NetConf. You can it has a CLI, you know, a graphical user interface. So across the board, it just gives you a really beautiful way to look at what is traditionally I think is you know a, a terminal world and then turning that into a programmable world. So you kind of you kind of touched on what I was about to ask you, but um just talk to us a little bit about what are the the supported protocols from a southbound API perspective that NSO could handle. So you mentioned RESTConf, NetConf, does it do GNMI? You know what 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 other uh, kind of capabilities does it does it handle? So typically when we're talking about NSO as an application southbound, I've referred to as talking to the devices below it. So the devices that it's managing um, and, and basically when it's managing those devices, NSO is agnostic to what type of protocol you're using. Basically it uses what are called network element drivers, basically its own packaging system to then have RBU or people can actually build their own drivers to connect to these devices. So whether that's the CLI, which is probably the most common, or you could be talking to ACI over its API, you could be talking to DCNM, you could be talking to, it's not just for net, network elements itself, but also other orchestrators as well. And so ac across the board, it's just a matter of when you're talking to the infrastructure or applications that it's managing, it, it's just a matter of building that into what these NEDs that are mostly maintained by the BU. And then northbound, so, so when NSO is exposing its functionality to other applications or users, uh, NSO provides all, all the major, I'd say, APIs that people are expecting. So it has a graphical, graphical user in interface, a CLI that actually mimics uh, the Cisco style CLI. So when you're in interacting with the application, if you have a network engineering background, you can really do the question marks, you can see the auto completions. It, it, it is a natural fit for people coming from that CLI driven world. But then it has all the APIs you'd expect in terms of a Python API that has kind of a class based structure to it where it's auto generated based on the models of the data that's working with. 
and as, as well as REST, um, Java, uh, and NetConf, and RESTConf. And so, yeah, there's just a, a ton of different ways to interact with it. it. Just depends on your context and your business business needs and the skill set of your team, and which one would be most interesting to you. I might be putting you on the spot with this question, but this sounds a lot. And we've had the conversation uh, previously about some of our other configuration management or orchestration tools. Sure. And so, uh, the one that comes to mind as we talk about NSO and some of its features is Ansible. And so, can you give me a little bit of an understanding about either the comparison or, or differentiators between NSO and Ansible, and um, in what scenarios you might use one over the other? Sure. Yeah, and, and I have a background, strong background in Ansible as well. I, I taught Ansible classes for almost two years um, to new network engineers, so I'm very familiar with. I see the logo behind your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> the ins and outs of what's going on on the Ansible side, and. It, it, it's Ansible, it, I think it's great, um, like run book, you know, engine for you to say, here are my sequence of tasks, here are my sequence of steps. I'm able to stitch together a workflow and have, you know, maybe pull in a, Web, a WebEx Teams messaging to work your, your, your operations teams of what's going on, maybe update an IP address management system, and maybe, uh, you know, connect to some other orchestrator. And Ansible does a great job of providing uh, YAML interface where people can easily read what's going on in these playbooks and then stitch them together in a cohesive workflow. I'd say the, the weakness of Ansible is actually the network configuration itself. The, the Ansible core engine doesn't provide any abstraction or I'd say a minimal abstraction uh, for network configuration. Uh, so oftentimes you're still troubleshooting white space errors. If you're working in, in Jinja 2 and YAML, you're having to deal with a troubleshooting environment that is, uh, I'd say, not very friendly. And, and, and so for NSO, what we're working with is, you know, a product that's been, been around for over 10 years and was designed from the ground up to be managing the network configuration. It's model driven, so it uses Yang models to represent all the configuration. Um, so from, from like a development standpoint, NSO is built from the ground up and provides, I'd say, a suitable abstraction for configuration as well as all these APIs and been doing that for a very long time. And Ansible does a great job of sequencing these tasks and stitching together, you know, multiple different tasks where NSO has an Ansible module. So you could have NSO be one of those tasks. So you, you're, you're doing your, your sequential steps where NSO itself, I'd say as a workflow engine, it has functionality to do that. Uh, but it, it re requires, you know, a deeper investment in NSO to understand how that works, where I think Ansible does the workflow side very well, but and, and so does the, the network configuration side very well. So, you know, together you're, you're able to, I think, really build off the strengths and weaknesses of each one. I really like the the feature set in in NSO with uh, allowing you to have a versionized con or version control of your configuration. Um, I think that's that's pretty uh, pretty powerful and um, something that you get in NSO that not, you don't necessarily get out of the box with uh, with Ansible. Um, outside of this conversation, but we ask all of our guests this one question. Uh, Jason, uh, if you have one superpower uh, and you had to pick, what would that be and why? I think for me, I, I'd love to be able to teleport. Um, just, I, I love being at destinations, but that the actual travel itself, you know, when you're fresh out of college, it's exciting. Um, but after a while, hotel rooms and uh, you know long plane flights with time zones can 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 be a chore. And so I'd love just to be like, okay, I'm going to be in, in Budapest today, or I'm I'm, I'm going to be you know in Sao Paulo, and 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 so not have to worry about all, all of the nitty gritty details of, of the in between times. I would take that because I'm supposed to drive nine hours on vacation uh, soon. Before we go, um, if there's anything uh, you know where people want to find out more information, get their hands uh, dirty with NSO, and uh, can you is there is there some material they can check out? Yeah, in, in recent months, we put a lot of effort into adding in new learning labs, uh, specific, specifically around Net DevOps, CI/CD, Ansible, and so th and those are set up to work with our reservable sandbox. We also have an always on sandbox if you want to play around with the APIs, and I've created a series of code exchange examples that I call Learn by Doing. Basically, that are meant to teach a, a simple concept and then, you know, a simple use case that's network relevant for different um, basic features around NSO. So I'd say those two things around checking out our learning labs and then checking out some of the code exchange examples. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So everyone, check that out. That's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you so much, Jason, for joining us, and thank you, Snackers, for joining us again for another episode of Demnet Snack Minutes. Thanks, Snackers. Thanks, Snackers. Yeah.